সরি রেকর্ড কথা ভুলে গেছিলাম মাত্র রেকর্ড স্টার্ট করছি এখানে আমি নাইট্রো পিডিএফ এর তিনটা ভার্সন তিনটাই কাজ করে এমএস ওয়ার্ড এর সবচেয়ে রিসেন্ট ভার্সন ওটাও ক্র্যাক করা আছে সবগুলা দিয়ে দিয়েছি রেডিয়েশন Three to five centimeter thickness of lead bricks. Lead, ha- lead can effectively have very good uh, stopping power for ionizing radiations. Because alpha particles do all of the ionization in a very small space. That's why if alpha particle does paint at human skin, they make a lot of ionization within a small amount of space. So there's a very much high likely that they would effectively uh, change the genetic code in the chromosomes, which can lead to uh, tumor growth, which can ultimately lead to cancer and so on and so forth. So in terms of hazard, alpha particles are considered the most hazardous. Beta particles are, least, uh, are a bit less hazardous. Gamma photons are the least hazardous. It doesn't mean that uh, 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 gamma photons are essentially good. I mean, we are talking about, let's say, lethal. Uh, I mean, we're talking about in terms of, they're all bad. One is really bad, another is uh, less bad, another is uh, least bad, something like that. And also, uh, so that's for the natural radioactivity. And another property that we have to understand that because alpha particles and beta particles are of oppositely charges, if we send these charged particles in an electric field, they are going to bend in opposite direction. However, because alpha particles have a much higher mass and beta particles have a very low mass, the amount of bending or the amount of deflection would always be higher for beta particles, which means beta particles would always have bigger amount of velocity change or duration change. They were going to make a much sharp turn or their curvature will be much, much uh, small whenever they bend. Whereas alpha particles would bend much less. They are going to uh, have, they're going to deviate slightly out of their straight line path, but they're not going to deviate as much as a beta particle. It uh, uh, mostly inertia. Yes, mostly inertia. Uh, if we send them in electrical, electrical, electric field, their pathway or their trajectory will be parabolic. And if we send them into a magnetic field, their trajectory will be circular. This is very important information. And also the direction of the alpha particle or beta particle in a magnetic field can be founded by Fleming's left hand rule. Uh, to apply Fleming's left hand rule, we have to consider the direction of positive charge particle is the same as hypothetical current or, or the conventional current I. <laughs> so our middle finger direction would represent the same direction as the alpha particle velocity. Whereas beta particles velocity sh- uh, beta, for beta particles, it should be exactly opposite. The direction of the beta movement of beta particles should be considered opposite of the direction of the movement of the of, uh, opposite of the current, conventional current. Gamma particles would have no deflection in any of the field because they don't have any charge. It's gonna always move in a perfect straight line. Then we have nuclear fission. Nuclear fission is the process of artificial breakdown for nucleus as per our requirement to get nuclear energy out of the nuclei. Uh, nuclear fission can be achieved by heating uh, an, an unstable nuclei with a neutron so that the neutron get absorbed in the, within the nucleus and increases the instability. Uh, is it instability or unstability? Unstable. Instable, instability, unstability, unstability, unstable. So that it, it will increase the unstability within the nucleus very rapidly and immediately break down into smaller daughter daughter products. Daughter products means daughter daughter nuclei. In this breaking down process, they will release energy. This en- released energy can come in can come out in two primary form. Whenever the uh, whenever a neutron will heat into a, a unstable nuclei, let's say uranium two thirty five and get absorbed there, immediately it will produce uranium-236. The lifespan of this isotope uranium-236 will be very small. 
and they do then it will immediately break down into daughter products the energy that will come out from the breakdown will come in two form one is that these daughter products will have some kinetic energy because of the breakdown and at the same time with the daughter products with the this fission process from uranium is going to release two or three more neutrons these neutrons are also going to be very high speed neutrons and additional to this we can have some gamma photons coming out we can so the energy output from a nuclear fission process can come out in two form one is the kinetic energy of the fission fragments fission fragments means either uh, the daughter products and also the high speed neutrons they are all going to have kinetic energy because they are going to be blasting out like a bomb getting blasted or a grenade getting blasted they are going to have kinetic energy additional to that we can have some emission of gamma photons or gamma and uh, gamma radiative uh, sorry electromagnetic waves these are the two type of energy which will be the immediate outcome of the nuclear fission process but because this happens within a rod or within a confined environment this will be immediately converted into heat energy of that environment that heat energy can be extracted by appropriate process for example primary coolant cycle the primary coolant is the uh, is the water the high pressure water which is not allowed to boil by maintaining extremely high pressure which is going to take the heat energy from the new, uh, new, uh, from the core or the reactor of the uh, nuclear uh, chamber nuclear power station reactor it will take heat from the reactor core and going to be traveling uh, to a heat exchanging heat exchanger mechanism within the heat exchanger within the heat exchanger mechanism the there would be some copper or steel pipes through which the hot water is going to flow by which is called the primary coolant and the secondary water which is basic water that will be fed outside this thing and with through the metal pipe they are going to exchange heat and in that heat exchanger the secondary coolant that fed water would be allowed to boil and that boiled steam would be used to blow into turbines and that turbine will eventually rotate and eventually convert into city the water that will pass through the reactor will be never let out into the environment because that the, the water that essentially tra travels through the reactor will also become radioactive over the time for convenience sake in many cases we prefer to use uh, deuterium oxide <laughs> because deuterium oxide tend to have a more significantly higher specific capacity compared to regular water so it's easier to make the heat transfer process possible much too uh, easily the idea uh, so the the nuclear fission process is is good in the sense that uh, it when controlled properly and now how do you control it that, that i'm going to talk about the reactor technology a little bit later the nuclear i mean nuclear energy is good for us for for a very good reason the reason is that nuclear energy is extremely concentrated energy the idea of energy concentration can go like this let's say how many joules of energy can you get from a certain mass of object let's say if you burn 1 kg of of petrol you're going to get a certain amount of energy out of it if you burn 1 kg of let's say natural Oil. gas you're going to get another amount of energy if you burn uh, let's say 1 kg of sodium uh, with the presence in the presence of oxygen you're going to get another amount of energy so we can all have different amount of energy from different type of substances in terms of energy density it means how much energy is obtainable from unit mass of an object nuclear energy is extremely concentrated which means a very small amount of nuclear fuel can give out a huge amount of energy that's one benefit the secondary benefit is that nuclear energy does not produce any uh, any harmful gases like that uh, basically the greenhouse gases but it also produces a very bad thing which is nuclear waste nuclear waste is basically the uh, the the what can i say the excre excretion excretion of the nuclear reactor uh, what it means is that every once in a while the fuel rods which contains enriched uranium at the beginning of the process they actually deplete out of their uranium source which means you have the rod but they are no longer uranium they have broken down into the fission fragments and they those fission fragments cannot be broken down any further but the problem that happens the isotopes within which these fission fragments break down into these isotopes have a very large half-life the problem of having very large half-life is that that essentially these material will keep on giving out ionizing radiation 
for a really long amount of time. And because natural radioactivity is a natural process and it's a spontaneous process, we cannot physically accelerate this process anyhow. There is no way we can essentially get rid of this radioactive behavior uh, within a given amount of time artificially. So all that we can do and all that that is done with for radioactive waste is that we simply keep them in confined environments so that they never come into contact with uh, natural environment of, of plants or animals or anything like that. That's the only way we can deal with nuclear waste. But if such type of a facility is well maintained and well uh, managed, then nuclear fuel is definitely preferable compared to fossil fuel. Fossil fuel have so many bad effects on our environment that is that it can practically make our environment unbearable. But if we can manage the nuclear fuel properly, it can be made into much better use. One of the problem of nuclear fuel, one of the problem of nuclear fuel is that. Uh, well, uh, like Batman says that with higher responsibility, with higher power, greater power comes greater responsibility. So uh, one of the important thing is that nuclear energy is good in terms of its benefit. But then again, maintaining a nuclear reactor properly is also a very important thing. Because if a nuclear reactor, nuclear reactor is basically a nuclear bomb where it is allowed to give out energy at a control rate. I mean, let me put it in a very simple term. Let's say every car that runs on fuel, they have a petrol tank or diesel tank. This entire petrol tank or diesel tank is basically an explosive device. If you if you shoot a bullet into that uh, that tank, the entire car is going to explode. But whenever a car is run, it does not explode because it takes up that fuel by a small amount and burns it out in a controlled environment. There is a certain rate of energy flow, and using that energy flow, we can convert that energy into kinetic energy conveniently as per our requirement. Whenever we require high speed, we face the accelerator, the fuel rate entry is increased and vice versa. Nuclear energy is exactly like that. We can, we, the entire reactor is basically a highly energy compacted nuclear bomb. Only in the reactor, we control the rate of decay in such a way so that too much energy is not released over a short period of time. Because every bomb is basically a huge amount of energy released over a short period of time. So to maintain the nuclear breakdown in control, to keep it in check, we use control rods. The control rods can be made from borons or molybdenums. These materials have the capability that they can absorb high speed neutron. So these control rods are placed in appropriate design spaces between the fuel rods. And if we allow these control rods to fed into the reactor, <laughs> they're going to absorb significant portion of the free neutrons produced from every nuclear fission reaction and they are not going to be allowed those neutrons are not going to be allowed to make subsequent reaction uh, nuclear fission nuclear fission reaction is basically a chain reaction the idea of chain reaction is that once started it is self sustaining it can go on on its own without any further help from the outside so that's what that's the purpose of the control rods apart from the control rods there is also another very important factor uh, that is uh, for the reactor is that the typical speed range for the freshly produced neutrons coming out of one reductive uh, one one nuclear fission of uh, uranium-235 nucleus is usually very high it is typically so high that these neutrons have the virtual uh, they have the capability that they can penetrate into a uranium-235 nucleus and go out on the other side without making a successful breakdown we do not want this to happen. We want to make sure that either the neutrons will make the decay or they are going to get absorbed in the, in the boron or molybdenum, uh, molybdenum uh, 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 control rods. So to make sure that it is happening, so to reduce the speed of the neutrons as the neutrons are produced from the nitrification rods, we use a medium that's called a moderator. A moderator uh, in the nuclear reactor, two materials can work as the moderator. One is the carbon or basically a graphite frame and also the water that runs through the, or through the reactor, both of these two material can work as a moderator. The purpose of the moderator is to slow down the speed of the neutrons to such a level so that the, each of the, whenever the neutron will hit the nucleus of uh, uranium-235 nuclei, it would get absorbed there. It would, it's not going to paint it out to the rear side. By making sure it's happening, we can keep check of the whole reaction. So that's basically the benefit and the advantage of the nuclear uh, nuclear stuffs. Uh, 
হ্যাঁ কোশ্চেন একটু পড়ে নিচ্ছি একটু ওয়েট করো অ্যাপার্ট ফ্রম দ্যাট দেয়ার আর টু মোর থিংস দ্যাট আর লাইক টু ডিসকাস ওয়ান ইজ দ্য গ্যাগা মার্জিন এক্সপেরিমেন্ট অ্যান্ড দেন দ্য সাউথ এন্ড ইউজফুলনেস অফ অফ রেডিও টু সাবস্টেন্সেস বাট আল টেক কোশ্চেন্স না বলো সাবই বলো সাবই বলো করলেন <laughs> it uh, the uh, core of a nuclear reactor has sufficient energy to create a large explosion right you just yes the energy slowly so that that does not happen and we can use it carefully and usefully right yes okay sir all, all right abdullah <laughs> so you said that alpha particles are the most hazardous but don't they get like absorbed by the skin tar bhitore jabe ke they get absorbed by the skin but the idea is that i mean the thickness of dead skin on our body is is not that much big to stop all the alpha particles for example we don't have scales we have hair beneath that we have fresh fresh skin skin is made up of live cells and every every part of the body that has that is alive they have some sort of blood circulation or lymph node circulation into them which means if your alive cells if my alive cells become uh what become if its genetic material gets uh, problem somehow then there is all possibility that i might have that infection going around in my body yes sir yes sir it's a moderate assumption to get about it to slow down the high speed neutrons to a lower value so that the collision from of the neutron with the fresh uranium 233 nuclei can be successful the neutrons do not paint it on the other side penetrate kore samoshya ki painted kore gele breakdown hobe na to make sure the breakdown happens the neutron have to be absorbed by the uranium 233 nucleus and that's when that's after when the nucleus will break down like i said that whenever the neutron gets absorbed in the uranium 235 it becomes uranium 236 there is a certain measurable life span of this uranium 235 236 isotope which scientists have measured this is very small within the uh, range of nano or picosecond and then it breaks down into the uh, daughter products but if a neutron leaves out of the uranium 23 nucleus much earlier than that then there is not enough time for this whole thing to break off thank you sir sure hasan sir moderator chakra then why do we need control rods when of boron if they absorb neutrons moderators do not absorb neutrons they slow down the neutrons to make the reaction more happening controllers completely absorb out the neutrons so that the reaction should not happen purpose of the moderator is not to slow down the reaction to be honest purpose of the moderator is to make the reaction more successful or to make it more rapid the moder if the moderators bucho bucho আচ্ছা <laughs> that one breakdown can release two neutrons <coughs> they can give back down two more they can break down four more they can break down eight more so there will be an exponential growth of breakdown we don't want that to happen we want the breakdown to happen in a controlled manner so that we have e- nearly equal number of nucleus breakdown every second so all the extra neutrons which are coming out we need to absorb them up yes sir <laughs> this is also an, another very important aspect all a, a part two tomorrow silver sin is not important now but i i feel like telling you this is also another important aspect that which isotope of our material is <coughs> sorry is actually more useful 
for a nuclear reactor. For any isotope to be used, used in a nuclear reactor, it is imperative that the number of free neutrons coming out of that breakdown, the average number of free neutrons coming out of the breakdown should be more than one. If it is less than one, you cannot have chain reaction out of it. Let's say if it, for example, if it happens, if it is more than one, it means that you are going to have enough neutrons and free neutrons available in your environment. So they will make subsequent collision, so subsequent breakdown. This is very important because if that doesn't happen, you cannot use that material for a reactor core. You can use that for a chain reaction. There has to be and uh, there has to be a possibility. There has to be a sure possibility. Sure possibility is an oxymoron. What, how can I say this? There has to be a definite possibility that chain reaction with this isotope of nuclear substance can happen. And then we're gonna control how many decays we, we want to allow within the reactor by the use of the control rods. <coughs> Otherwise, too much energy will be released, causing an explosion, right? Exactly. And to be honest, it does not require that much too much of an energy. It, it, it all comes down to the point that, I mean, try to understand the basic idea. If you are, let's say, if you are running a car and your radiator stops to work, what is the purpose of a radiator? To continuously cool off the engine. Do you know what is the radiator? No, sir. Uh, to continuously pump cold air into the into the into the metal board chassis of the body. I mean the way uh, internal combustion engine, IC engine works, let's say if you feed it hundred joule of chemical energy. By the burning process, it might as well, let's say, <coughs> take out maybe, let's say, 60 joule of the energy into kinetic energy. It means 60 joule kinetic energy will be fed to the, fed to the <coughs> shaft. <coughs> Sorry, crankshaft. The remaining 40 joule will be used up as heat energy by the entire metal case. You need to continuously take out this energy. Otherwise, your metal case is going to heat up so high that it, is going, it can reach to a point of mechanical failure. It is important that we will always have to cool down that engine. This is very important. In the same way, whenever a nuclear reactor is producing heat energy by means of a nuclear breakdown, we have to make sure that every second the amount of energy, the power of the nuclear energy output has to be exactly equal to the amount of energy taken away by the primary coolant. Let's say in the, re the reactor is essentially very hot. It's a nuclear in a fission environment. If the nuclear, if the reactor is producing, let's say one gigajoule per second, if it is a one gigawatt reactor, your primary coolant should be able to take out one gigawatt of energy, uh, one gigawatt out of heat energy every second. If it takes less then every second, that much energy will be residually stored within your reactor environment. The temperature will slowly soar higher, 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 higher. So there has to be very critical equilibrium maintained that your heat transfer process should not be less compared to the heat generation process. Bucho. Taki bolo. Sir, Vijay. Uh, sir, uh, new, uh, uranium, sir. I am reading from the sir. Uranium is co nucleus unstable, sir. I mean, counter with the neutron, the nucleus, or it a it a go away. Sir, conta conta sir, conta unstable conta isotope bola uranium. Uranium and naturally occurring isotope was a duty. Uranium 235, uranium 238. Between these two, uranium 235 is more unstable. More unstable in the sense that, uh, in terms of half life, uranium 238 has a much much longer half life compared to uranium 235. So uranium 235 is more unstable, so it is easier to break down. Sir, then I'm like uranium 238 like 235 banana feeling. We cannot make uranium 238 into uranium 235. We, by some by some chemical process, we first separate out the uranium from the ore. Then, by some uh, uh, precipitation process, there is a uh, there is a very uh, complex procedure. The the uranium 235 and 238, these two isotopes are separated out. And then the 235 is mostly used in the reactor. In the reactor, uh, uh, in the, for nuclear fuel, uh, uranium can be used. 
plutonium can also be used, but the reason plutonium is less preferred because uh, plutonium happens to be more costly compared to uranium in terms of availability and also in terms of extraction process. Sir, uranium two thirty five is very rare. So, what is the expensive part? No, nah, uranium two thirty five is not very very rare. In terms of uh, in terms of earth crust material availability, plutonium is more rare. That's why. Sir, you need uranium two thirty eight. Ki shay dono use karo ha. Radioactive uh, 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 fuel core or bomb. You know, as well. So zero point seven to this. <laughs> There is a unit 233. I have never come across to know this. What? No. Wow. Wow. <clears throat> These are artificial. Natural. That has no sources. It has two primordial. It has two primordial isotopes. Primordial isotopes means these are the two isotopes that we can extract from environment. Okay. These are the, uh, uh, this is synthetic, this is trace. Trace means it is very rare, like super rare. 0.005%, uh, what is this? Uh, this is uh, As a eta to as a uranium two thirty five, uranium two thirty is more abundant. I think uranium two thirty eight air, uh, we number to check on a minute. All right, <laughs> hold up. <laughs> Other heavy nuclear that are fissile and blind from a fission are in 33. Plutonium, plutonium. <coughs>
কিন্তু মেলা কিছু লেখা আর কিছু বড় দরজা নাই হ্যাঁ বলো স্যার আর স্যার কন্ট্রোলস কোলা রেডিয়েটিভ হয়ে যাওয়ার কথা না যেহেতু এক্সট্রা নিউট্রন্স আছে everything that exists within the reactor and everything that passes through the reactor everything becomes radioactive over time yes and whenever a reactor is overhauled overhaul means whenever you stop the reactor and do an overall on a major uh, change and repairing and 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 fault checking of the thing this is called overhauling <coughs> a lot of things are replaced everything that gets out of the reactor are considered as radioactive waste the controllers cannot be used indefinitely the every controller has a certain limit for how many neutrons can they use so every once in a while they have to be replenished as well if you want to run the reactor for uh, let's say given amount of time <clears throat> yes anup sir ye yeah. radi radiation radioactive kano hai na radioactive radioactive is defined as certain property for which ionizing radiation such as alpha beta or gamma comes out of them the radiations which are coming out they do ionizing ionization they do not break down and give out more stuffs for example if i if i tell you some for example let's say the sun is bright but is sun the light sun gives out light but is sun itself light yes sir something like that bujhe to parchi ji sir good sabir sir what is uranium 238 used for i'm not very sure i just looked it up but i couldn't find it within the given time frame अभी तो चैनल क्यों जैसे अच्छा uranium 238 itself will produce from its own breakdown what i'm trying to mean is that if you have uranium 238 let's say an uranium 238 requires a neutron of kinetic energy of 10 joule whenever an uranium 238 will naturally break down or will artificially break down by nuclear fusion fusion process let's say it, it releases some neutron none of those neutrons will have 10 joule of amount of energy whereas uranium 235 can be broken down with neutrons which do have energy 
which do produce energy, uh, which do produce neutrons, which have much higher energy than they actually require to make that breakdown possible. To reduce that energy amount, we use the moderators. So in a nuclear reactor, there is no artificial way that we can capture every single neutron and essentially make them uh, make their speed go higher. So that's why uranium 238 is, cannot produce a uh, chain reaction because its own neutrons cannot be used for further breakdown naturally. Whereas uranium 238 can do that. Sir, the 238 thicket, the neutron bear hard, they do not have sufficient energy to carry it forward, so we don't use it. They don't have sufficient energy to break down further uranium 238. We can make artificially energetic neutrons to actually break down uranium 238, which that's why they are saying that uranium 238 is a fissionable material, it can be fissioned into, but it is not fissile, thermally fissile, it means that it necessarily cannot sustain chain reaction. Yes, sir. Kojomo, you can sir. Nah. Okay, so that was that 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 part was there about that much. And then the other part that I would like to discuss is that uh, the uses of radioactivity. Uses of radioactivity the important part of say. The, the primary use of radioactivity is in uh, in radiotherapy, medical medical use. Uh, radiotherapy means that we use radioactive high energy gamma radiation only. We use high energy gamma radiation to kill off cancer cells into a patient's in, in a patient's body. The reason, uh, I mean, if you wonder that should, uh, doesn't gamma radiation actually produce uh, more cells? The answer is yes. But whenever a tumor is about to become malignant or a tumor cannot, that cannot be surgically removed uh, from a patient's body, it has become sort of spread out. Uh, the doctors typically have to go for uh, radiotherapy. The way the radiotherapy works is that within a certain location, the different beams of gamma rays are focused so that at a certain location, they produce a very high intensity of those gamma radiation at the focus point where all the rays cross each other and at that really, at that location the amount of gamma photons absorbed by the by those cell molecules they actually disintegrate at molecular level by by feeding that much raw high energy by the gamma photons so that essentially kills those cancer cells which cannot be killed by other procedure uh, people can also go for chemotherapy i do not know the exact mechanism of chemotherapy not going to cover over here but the way the way radiotherapy works is by by dividing up or tearing up the cell at its molecular level. That's essentially what happens. So uh, this actually kills a lot of cancer cells, but at the same time, it can give rise to new type of cancer cell within the region. But the, the reason it can, it is, it is still prescribed as a way of treating uh, uh, patients is because whenever we do this, whenever this is actually done, we can, significantly kill uh, the cancer cells but alongside that quite a good number of physical healthy cells can be killed as well what we are trying to achieve is to kill the most amount of cancer cells and affect the least number of body cells that's why we do not apply chemotherapy or radiotherapy to the entire body we focus that in a certain region or in a certain location of the patient's body uh, that's the one of the primary use uh, another another use can be this is the this is the case where the relative specimen relative element is kept in a machine which aims the gamma radiation toward inside the patient's body so here the element is not inserted inside the patient's body it is kept in a device any single case industrial or medical if we use the relative element in a device then we would appreciate it to have a really long half-life so that we do not have to buy it too often. And there, and there is a certain isotope, which is iodine-131, I believe, uh, which can be inserted into patient's bloodstream to, absor to observe the function of, uh, of uh, thyroid gland. Uh, for that kind of specimens, which would be, which would be inserted into, into patient's body, 
uh, it, it these also must be also uh, gamma sources because we do not want to insert uh, beta or alpha sources in a patient's but that could be really hazardous so uh, they ho have to be gamma gamma sources and also uh, these things should have a very small half life so that the person's body is uh, does not have the radiative effect over a very long amount of time. For example, the typical RNA, RNA 131 isotope that 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 we that can be used for this for a certain type of diagnosis, I think it has a half life of about I think six hours or eight hours something like that. Which means within uh, six hour something like that. So within a day or within two days, it actually reduces down to minimal level. So that can work. And there is another thing that uh, I would like to talk about, uh, which is that in, in within industrial uses, the most type of industrial use for radiative isotopes is basically like scanning. Uh, so we can use uh, uh, gamma radiation scanning in airports for cases where high powerful X-rays are not applicable. We can use gamma radiation uh, scanning to look inside uh, containers of industrial devices where we can have a differential reading for that we can use beta sources to uh, to look inside uh, paper cans not metals preferably because metals would be uh, absorbing beta radiation very strongly so so for paper cans or paper container we can uh, try to scan that how much it is filled up so what material what type of radiation sh are, or should we use for a certain application is dependent upon what kind of material are you trying to penetrate you should choose that kind of a source that should give you a different different result for different type of variation for example alpha sources can never be used for any industrial process whatsoever because they have so less penetrating power they can be effectively absorbed completely within three to five centimeter of air so alpha particles don't have any industrial use in industries we use uh, beta radiation or we use uh, gamma or we use uh, what we use uh, what is it uh, uh, gamma radiation. One of the things that you might wonder that if we use uh, beta radiation for uh, or or gamma radiation for certain food container or something like that, shouldn't that food become radioactive? The answer is no. The food does not become radioactive. We are not inserting radioactive specimen within the food. We are checking the level of the food in, by shooting some high energetic electrons. These electrons can get absorbed within the material, and they are simply going to get absorbed and be make the uh, drinks or the food slightly negatively charged that's all that they're gonna do so whenever you're gonna eat it your body will essentially make that thing discharged so the food does not become radioactive by checking it with a with a radiative source or gamma sources the food simply becomes slightly hot or the food slightly becomes charged which your body can very easily take care of there is no harm done or there is no pollutants that is added to the uh, to the whole thing Somebody wrote something in the chat. Gamma radiation can we use corona food checking that because uh, food materials cannot give differentiable amount of uh, level for because they are not very thick. I mean, so the gamma radiation is going to pass through perfectly to the food and air, like everything in the same way that buddha japana so we use electron exactly, exactly. better huh? so we have to have a have a have a have a material that can uh, be, that can give us different readings for different amount of uh, presence of material that is important eta gelo ekta ar e por ache hocche gagamarsen experiment the gagamarsen experiment is very simple uh, this experiment was initially thought out by uh, arnold sutherford and then it was later carried on by gagamarsen so uh, it sometimes it's also called Rutherford's for alpha particle experiment or Rutherford's gold foil experiment and sometimes it's called Gagamarsen experiment. Uh, it can vary. Uh, the key idea of Gagamarsen experiment is that these scientists actually spend a lot of human hours to make a very thin gold foil. Thickness within uh, three, I think three to five atom thickness. And then they shot high speed alpha particles into that gold foil and to observe how these alpha particles would behave. They placed uh, auto uh, fluorescent. They placed 
fluorescent screen around that gold foil. The, what they found out was pretty amazing and eventually they gave their total observation in three different distinct uh, parts uh, which led to three different decisions. So I'm going to say those uh, observations and decisions one at a time. Number one, the first observation was that most of the alpha particles painted through the gold foil in a straight line and hit the spot right behind the alpha uh, gold foil. The, uh, the decision was that atom is mostly empty space because the alpha particles could go painted through the alpha gold foil without any uh, deflection or without, with any, without any virtual deflection. Virtual deflection means very small, let's say zero to two degree deflection that's considered negligible. Number two, some of the alpha particles showed significant deviation from their path because some of the alpha particles, quite few, quite few, uh, quite a small number, some of the alpha particles did deviate away from their original path. The, observe, the decision was that the inside the nucleus, there must be a very small, very highly positively charged. Two things, very small, very small because only some of the alpha particles were affected by it, not a lot of them. Uh, let, I think the number is, uh, the number is, I think, 40 out of 2000 or something like that. I actually forgot. So, uh, some of the alpha particles got deviated from their original path. So that, give us the, that gives us the idea that uh, the inside the nucleus, there should be a very small, yet very highly positively charged particle, which had enough capability to make the alpha particles deviate away from their path by means of uh, reversive forces. The third observation is that very few of the alpha particles rebound back to the same side. Or this, this, this uh, observation can be said in a lot of different ways. It can be said by either uh, came back to the same side, bounce back to the same side. It can be also said that they had a deflection of more than 180 degree. So, so they have a deflection of more than 90 degree. Having a deflection of more than 90 degree means basically they came back towards the same side or they bounced off the gold foil. They, they can be said in a lot of different ways, but that's uh, one way to say that. So because some alpha particles did bounce back to the same side, this observation led to the decision that this very small, highly positively charged particle that definitely does exist within a nucleus must also be highly massive. Because it is highly massive, it has a physical capability to deflect off that goal, uh, that alpha particle. So that's the third decision. So these are the observation and decision from the gaia Mersenne experiment. One of the important bit that I need to add here, the entire this experiment of the gaia Mersenne essentially give us an idea of a nuclear atom. Later, this whole uh, uh, particle that they decided does exist within the nucleus within the atom named as nucleus and from from that point came the idea of nuclear atom the, uh, this is much later than robert hook do you know who robert hook is Hooke's law, Hooke's law. And, microscope. Uh, and also microscope is it i was going for that robert hook was the first person who, did, who discovered who actually invented i would say discovered who invented a microscope and he observed the cell uh, cell structure and he first named the nucleus nucleus so the central body of a large thing was named nucleus by him and the gaga machine experiment happened in 1906 through 19, 1910 the results were published in 1911 so uh, they they also named that central object as nucleus so this i uh, named nucleus actually came down from robert hook uh, that's just a bit of history anyway <clears throat> so this experiment only gives us the idea of a nuclear atom. It does not give us any idea about how the electrons are ar ar arranged around the nucleus. So the entire distribution or the shell and everything, these things were not found in Ga Gaia Mars experiment. These were later hypothesized and eventually proven by other scientists. It came from news board, blah, 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 blah. So nuclear, uh, so Rutherford's experiment or Rutherford's gold foil experiment uh, only gives us the idea about a nuclear atom. The electrons are no part of this discussion whatsoever. So this is a bit about gaia mersenne experiment. The next thing that uh, that is left within this chapter is I believe the half-life and the half-life calculation. Uh, this is a mathematical process that I did show you earlier because I, I cannot describe it properly. 
but one thing I would like to add to this thing is that there is a thing that is called background background radiation. Background radiation is basically the radiation that we receive from naturally occurring isotopes which are all around us. <laughs> naturally occurring Like me, hold on, hold up. So the school who say? Ah, sir. No, sir. Physically, the whole thing is not possible. No, you must not. The school who say? No, sir. Physically, I am not. So that is shop class online, hoy. Yes, sir. Pure. Shop class online. No, sir. No, sir. ज़्यादा क्लास कौन है ना तारा कि माने इच छह वैकेशन नहीं सामान होता ना कि तारा स्कूल चले दी से कौने के स्कूल वैकेशन माने बहुत सर बहुत माने ज़्यादा क्लास करते हैं ना तारा कि इवेंट्स नहीं मास्टर में थे के बाद तो मान रेस्पेक्टिव स्कूल थे के बाद गिनहरल बाय एसएस थे के स्कूल थे के रि� स्कूल का ना पार्षण है ना 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 इटा ना आसे अनेक मनी होय सर उधर टीचर जरूर मोर्जिक देने उधर जनो है ना माने मनी सर अनेक जन शावित तो मोर्जिक देख पड़ेगा ना तो उधर बोले जिस स्कूले पढ़ा है ना मोर्जिक दो रे बुझे जो पार्षण है इटा वो सुन चू मोर्जिक का त्यौहार का था उसे जो शब्द किसी शावट जनो � तब लेके बोला नहीं कहा ठीक ही ना बिरयानी नहीं थी देखो ना बाकी ऐसे सर ठीक है बहुत बार उसका कटल खाया था बारे ना तामर की कटल खराब जाती है फोर कॉल ऐड कर दे क्यों बोलो कहाँ तो जोजी नहीं है इसे भालो के दूसरे कॉल ऐड कर दे मज़े मज़े और जब तो कटल खाए लो दिन आगे सुखा ला गया सर गैस है। इसमें वो कार्हाल अच्छा ना था कि ये ये प्रिस्क्रिप्शन तो वहाँ तक बोला लाभ नहीं तो मैं रखूँ तो वारा ना। अच्छा क्यों बोलते सिलाम? बैकग्राउंड रेडिएशन। बैकग्राउंड रेडिएशन। बैकग्राउंड रेडिएशन इस द आउटपुट ऑफ़ नेचुरली ऑकरिंग नेचुरली नेचुरल ब्रेकडाउन is a reductive isotope. Potassium is not. K30 is not. K30 is 40. Then we have chlorine. Chlorine is 37 and chlorine is 35. Chlorine is 37. Is chlorine is 37 radioactive? I'm not sure. I'm going to forget. Do you know? Is chlorine is 37. No, it's stable, sorry. Chlorine, I sort of... I'm going to talk about potassium 40. Chlorine is 40. Potassium 40 is radioactive. So, you can see that you have a radioactive acid. आसे बासे शोएर भी तेरे खाबारे में मुझे शॉप खाने आसे दे एगुलर दिस दिस द द नेचुरल प्रेजेंस ऑफ दिस रेडिटिव एसिडोस इज वेरी लो पर इज नॉट एसेंशियली जीरो सो ऑल ऑफ दिस रेडिटिव एसिडोस दे आर कंट्रोल्स अंडर गोइंग ब्रेक डाउन ऑल अराउंड अस एंड दे ऐड अ सर्टेन अमाउंट ऑफ रेडिएटिविटी इन is what you call background radiation. The natural radioactivity of an environment is called background radiation. And the number of counts that we get from that radiation is what you call background count. What is really important that if we do any radiative experiment with for any radiative specific isotope in any, in any lab or in any, any environment, in any location, it is very, very important that all of these data or all of these count numbers should be background corrected. Background corrected means if, let's say, if if a certain location has a background radiation of let's say 15, and now if you wonder what does this number 15 mean? I mean, 
what did this come from this basically means how many decays are happening over a certain amount of time for which you are going to also measure your specimen for example let's say you have a gagger muller counter to using which you can measure the uh, uh, decay numbers let's say the environment gives you a background uh, count number of 15 now if you uh, which means any number of count that you do for your radiative specimen now you bring about the radiative specimen in the room and you start taking reading every now if you plan to take reading for your radiative specimen every minute then you should also measure your background count for every minute if you plan to take your the relative count for your specimen every five minutes, then you should also measure the background count for every for five minutes. This is very important. And what is what is also very important that uh, scientifically it is important to measure the background count in six directions, five minutes each. Six duration manoche front, back, left, right, up, down. In all the axis directions of a three dimensional axis system, you measure it up for equal amount of time add this up and eventually find out the average that is a background count and then you start to measure do your experiment all of your data that you get get from your relative specimen all of those things will have their default background count added to it so all of these numbers should be subtracted uh, by the background count number if you if you do the subtraction and then plot a graph then maybe the graph would appear to become asymptote with the x-axis but if you do not do the background correction, correction and directly plot a graph, then it will become asymptote with the background correction level. So for a background corrected graph, the graph, the count rate would be about half. The half life can be appropriately applicable. But if a background count cannot be, is not done, then that proper halving would not happen because every value would have uh, that, that background value added to this, which I'm going to show you with some numerical example. I did not show this earlier. Uh, I'm going to show you in a numerical example, but someone to say, Akash, take a background count. Akash, take a background count. It's a cosmic radiation. <laughs> Plus, the presence of radon gas is one of the main reasons of background count. Yes, into something with the x axis, both of them automatically. Monocoro at a certain <coughs> experimenter environmenter background count monocoro hoche Beautiful. Who put it to brother like that? Of how much shifter sticky legacies. Acha. Man, got a certain experiment there. Background count was fifteen. Ahan. Monogram like proper experiment could you see? J experimenter background character graph of Cheroko. Monogram background character graph here. A chicken am equal spacing issue mark Cori, Monogram a connector, a connector, a little check the half life mark. Let's say Monogram other starting number to one thousand. Axis gulaki, y axis key, x axis key. It also time. Are it a whole check count? Sorry, count. Yes, sir. 
এই কাউন্টটা হচ্ছে একটা ফিক্সড अमाउंट অফ ডিউরেশনের জন্য মানে ইনফাইন না মানে কাউন্ট পার মিনিট অর কাউন্ট পার 5 মিনিট অর কাউন্ট পার হাফ এন আওয়ার কাউন্ট পার সেকেন্ড ইউ ক্যান ডিফার फ्रॉम লোকেশন টু লোকেশন এখন মনে করো এই গ্রাফটা হচ্ছে ব্যাকগ্রাউন্ড কারেক্টেড এটা যদি ব্যাকগ্রাউন্ড কারেক্টেড হয় তাহলে ফার্স্ট রিং টা যদি 1000 হয় এখান থেকে আমাদের গ্রাফ শুরু হলো সেকেন্ড রিং টা হবে হচ্ছে 500 মনে করো এই সমগ্র হচ্ছে হাফ লাইফ ঠিক আছে সেকেন্ড রিং টা হবে 500 ঠিক আছে না मान ग्राफ टाइम The graph टा ना big 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 जैसे है। कौन सा सी? I am awesome. Graph टा about एक रुपये होते हैं, ठीक है सर? Not the best of the graph, but एक graph टा एक सिक्स सिक्स जाते हैं असल से मिले जाओ बहुत है, माने gap टा एक सिक्स सिक्स जाते हैं असल से कोमे आज पे। है, to be honest, अम्म जो अकोन raw data नहीं है जितने graph plot कोडी তাহলে গ্রাফটা অবশ্যই একটু জিগজ্যাগ হবে বিকজ এডিটিং প্রসেস ইজ র্যান্ডম হুইচ मींस এভরি সিঙ্গেল প্রজেক্টেড নাম্বার উড নট বি অ্যাকুরেটলি ফাউন্ড প্রজেক্টেড নাম্বারস ক্যান ভ্যারি একটু কম বেশি হতে পারে বাট আমরা যদি একটা বেস ফিট লাইন আঁকি তাহলে আমরা একদম স্মুথ একটা কার্ভ পাবো হোয়ারেজ এই সেম জিনিসটা যদি ব্যাকগ্রাউন্ড ক্যারেক্টার না হয় যদি এটা ব্যাকগ্রাউন্ড নন ক্যারেক্টার হতো তাহলে ফার্স্ট রিং তে আসতো হচ্ছে 1015 1015 কেন कारण হাফ হবে কোনটা স্পেসিমেন এর রিডিং 15 কিন্তু হাফ হবে না বুঝতেছ এই পার্টি তো আবার বলবো ব্যাকগ্রাউন্ড কাউন্টটা তো ওভার দ্য ডিউরেশন হাফ হবে না ওভার দ্য ডিউরেশন ব্যাকগ্রাউন্ড কাউন্ট সেমই থাকবে স্পেসিমেন এর যে ডিকে রেট সেটা ওভার দ্য টাইম হাফ লাইফে পড়ে কি হবে হাফ হবে 1000 অর্ধেক হয়ে 1100 হবে 15 কি হাফ হয়ে 7.5 হবে না স্যার না স্যার না স্যার এটা মানে ব্যাকগ্রাউন্ড নন ক্যারেক্টার গ্রাফে যদি আমরা রিডিং পাই তাহলে ফার্স্ট ফ্লোর ভ্যালু হওয়ার কথা হচ্ছে 1000 15 কয়টা কত 515 তারপর এটা হওয়ার কথা কত 265 বুঝতেছো জি স্যার জি স্যার এমনি করতে 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 এই গ্রাফটা অ্যাসিমটট হবে হচ্ছে যে যেখানে আমাদের কাউন্টেড 15 এ আছে ওই লাইনের সাথে আমাদের এই গ্রাফটা অ্যাসিমটট হবে মানে আমাদের এই গ্রাফটা অ্যাসিমটট হবে হচ্ছে अबाउट এই পয়েন্টের সাথে something like this এই হচ্ছে ডিফারেন্স সো যদি ব্যাকগ্রাউন্ড কারেকশন হয় তাহলে ওটা x axis এর সাথে অ্যাসিমটেড হওয়ার জন্য অ্যাটেম্প্ট করবে আর যদি ব্যাকগ্রাউন্ড কারেকশন না হয় তাহলে সেটা ব্যাকগ্রাউন্ড এর সাথে জিরো হওয়ার চেষ্টা করবে বিকজ অ্যাকচুয়ালি আমাদের এই গ্রাফে যে ইফ ইউ থিংক अबाउट ইট এই গ্রাফে অ্যাকচুয়ালি আমাদের অ্যাকচুয়াল স্পেসিমেনের দিকে হচ্ছে এই টুক ঠিক না उट রান্ডমনেস ইন দা অ্যাসপেক্ট আছে বাট তোমাদের ফুল ডিটেইলস জানা লাগবে না এটা এস আসবে আচ্ছা তারপর বলি র্যান্ডমনেস এর তিনটা অ্যাসপেক্ট হচ্ছে একটা হচ্ছে যে উই ক্যান নেভার এক্স্যাক্টলি প্রেডিক্ট হাউ মেনি ডিকেস উইল হ্যাপেন ওভার এ গিভেন ডিউরেশন অফ টাইম এটা হচ্ছে র্যান্ডমনেস এর একটা অ্যাসপেক্ট সেকেন্ড অ্যাসপেক্ট হচ্ছে উই ক্যান নেভার 
exactly predict exactly which radioactive nuclei will break down at a specific time. Je, I mean, a certain radioactive nucleus ke M column. M ko mark ko bolam je a radiative nucleus ta exactly 2.3 second pare fade jabe eta korte parbo na anything can break down at any time <coughs> third thing hocche we can never exactly predict in which direction the ionizing radiation is gonna pop out eta mane hocche je amra half life e porer jonno half life e je counter eta dekhte si amra exactly half hobe erokom na hote pare mone kora hocche ei eta to half life duration mone kora ami ekhane aro mone kora majkhane amader aro 20 30 ta reading ache so, I'm not exact raw value. Raw value is directly experiment obtained value. Raw value is a graph to plot. That graph might as well look like this. If we join on all of these lines, whenever we'll draw the base fit line through this zigzag line, then we're going get to get, get this smooth behavior. Naturally, from raw value, we'll never get a smooth line. Okay, I'm going to show you how to do it. Okay, it's ASA. I feel confused. Never mind. Abdullah, do you have any questions? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Are you going to recap the video in the chapter? Sir, GM2. Sir, GM2. Acha, GM tuber basic idea would say GM tuber monte a mother act a neutral gas tag. Neutral gas conta there, redon, redon, radiative, uh, xenon, na xenon, argon, hiramion, argon, krypton, xenon, argon. GM tuber monte argon gas tag. A argon gas air by the side act a metallic cap tag. Mask can act a metal shaft, a beta insulate corathake. Metal cap tie typically native voltage the hoy are mask can a shaft, GM to major or mask can a rotta, share the high positively charged voltage the hoy. It a some nectar mica sheet, mica sheet is a very thin material 
which can allow the penetration of radioactive ionizing radiation. A pura device take actor high voltage source of the connector of power. Jedura Tadama connector, she did a tarot mode connector at the amra at an sensitive emitter bosharaki, which can detect even a small current flow, even a very small current flow. And <coughs> that current flow is detected as one click or one count and can be counted by a attached counter or that count information or that or that current information can be fed to a computer which can make the count. So basically idea would say we have a device where we have a metal cylinder which would be highly negatively voltage fed and at the center there will be a metal shaft which will be highly positively voltage fed which would be anode and within the circuit there would be a very very sensitive emitter which would be able to absorb and detect very precise amount of current and count and give that pulse as a count the way gm tube works that if we aim the gm tube to any radiative source whenever any radiative breakdown happens which produces an ionizing radiation alpha beta or gamma that penetrates to the mica sheet and eventually enters into the argon chamber it <coughs> ionizes argon and that ionization produces electrons over a short period of time it is pretty fast all of those electrons multiple electrons i'm talking about not one because the incoming incoming ionizing radiation will not essentially ionize only one electron only one argon atom it will ionize multiple argon atom but all of those ionizations will happen within a very short amount of time these ionization will give rise to negatively charged sorry negative charged electron which will be free electron from the outermost shell of the argon <laughs> and positively charged argon atom argon ion argon ions will be attracted by the tube metal and repelled by the central cathode so they are gonna go towards the periphery and receive negative electron from those things and it will become neutral gas once again whereas the free electrons will be attracted towards the anode all of those free electrons irrespective of how many they are, they will be all absorbed to the anode pretty much at the same time and that will produce one flow of current or one pulse of current through that circuit. This pulse will be detected as one count. The idea is that if there, if there is one pulse of current flowing in the GM tube counter, that one pulse must have happened due to one ionization one ionizing radiation entering into the argon gas chamber one ionizing radiation must have come out from one radiative decay outside so every pulse of current represents one ionization uh, entering the argon chamber one ionization in one ionizing radiation entering the argon chamber you have to understand, have to understand that ecta argon atom into ionized multiple argon atoms get ionized but they get all get ionized at the same time. So there is a group of argon atoms which get ionized by a single ionization, uh, ionizing uh, radiation. All of those electrons produced from that ionization will Im together simultaneously get absorbed in the anode to give rise to one pulse of current. So if you have multiple ionization happening, you're gonna have multiple currents. And that current will be count it would be made to be as count so that's how the gm tube works yes sir yes sir no question no sir are you back yes sir oh sir money um, sir, fusion. Oh, fusion and uh, uh, and, and and star production. Uh, yes, sir. <coughs> Carbon dating. Joe Sparta. Carbon dating. To tumna bujo. Sir, bujo. Sir, bujo. Sir, bujo. Sir, bujo. Carbon dating. Hote basically yar moto, kisha moto. Je tomar hote je. Ebar CI result J system is the system moto. 
আল্লাহ কেমনে আনফেয়ার উল্টা পাল্টা ম্যাথমেটিক্যালি নো লজিক্যালি ইয়েস দিস ইজ হোয়াট সি আই ডিড দিস ইয়ার অলদো দে চেঞ্জ देयर ডিসিশন সো থিংস আর ব্যাক টু নরমাল ওয়ান সেকেন্ড প্রথমে ওরা যে রেজাল্টটা দিয়েছে আচ্ছা আমি কিছু সিএ বদনাম করি ঠিক আছে সেটা হচ্ছে প্রথমে ওরা যে রেজাল্টটা দিয়েছে সেই রেজাল্টটার বেসিস ছিল এরকম টিপিক্যালি একটা ডিসিশন সেন্টার থেকে মনে করো ব্রিটিশ কাউন্সিল বা মনে করো মাস্টারমাইন্ড বা মনে করো হচ্ছে ইএসএস বা মনে করো গ্রিন হেরাল্ড বা মনে করো অন্য কোন স্কুল টিপিক্যালি একটা ডিসিশন সেন্টার থেকে যে কোনো একটা एग्जामে যত परसेंट অফ স্টুডেন্ট এ স্টার পায় তো যত পার্সেন্টেজ এ পায় বা বি পায় তারা এইবার ওই সকল স্টুডেন্টদের প্রেডিক্টেড গ্রেডস এর উপর বেস করে তাদেরকে সর্ট করছে মানে হচ্ছে মনে করো তোমার স্কুল থেকে 100 জন স্টুডেন্টের একটা লিস্ট পাঠানো হয়েছে তো 100 জন স্টুডেন্টের তো তোমার স্কুল থেকে তো পাঠানো হয়েছে অ্যালফাবেটিক অর্ডারে বা অ্যাডমিশন হয়েছে তার সেই অর্ডারে তো তারা এই সবগুলো স্টুডেন্টকে ডিক্রিজিং অর্ডারে লিস্ট করছে লিস্ট করার পর পার্সেন্টেজ অনুযায়ী মনে করো তোমার স্কুল থেকে এত জন মনে করো হচ্ছে তোমার স্কুল থেকে প্রতি বছর 7.3% স্টুডেন্ট এ স্টার পায় সো প্রথম 7 জনকে তারা স্টার দিয়েছে তোমার স্কুল থেকে মনে করো প্রতি বছর 15.8% স্টুডেন্ট এ পায় সো পরের 16 জনকে তারা এ দিয়েছে তোমার স্কুল থেকে এই ভাবে তারা গ্রেডিং দিয়ে রেজাল্ট পাবলিশ করছে এন্ড বুঝো ঝামেলা primary je jamala ta hoyse seta hocche a lot of students deserving candidates got really poor results <coughs> in very rare cases some kids got better results than they should have had er pore eta holo worldwide ekta bishal jamala holo then cia understood that they are trading on rough waters mane eta jodi hoy tale most likely polaban cia theke दिसी <laughs> मान <coughs> मेजरिंग स्टिक attached with them so if any regard any relevant authority university for example want to evaluate them they better develop their own mechanism to evaluate these people this would be a hassle for about what maximum 2 or 3 years and then this hassle would be gone if you are not being able to make a valid exclusive acceptable all all around acceptable results don't do that এখন যে তারা সব প্রেডিক্টেড গ্রেডস গুলোকে রেজাল্ট দিয়েছে ইউনিভার্সিটি গুলো কি এটাকে খুব ভালো অ্যাকসেপ্টেবল একটা মানে মেজারিং স্টিক হিসেবে ইউজ করবে মানে হাউ ক্রেডিবল ইজ দ্যাট ডু ইউ কিডস গেট মাই পয়েন্ট ইয়েস স্যার স্যার দ্য রিজন অফ মাই ডিপ্রেশন দিস ওয়াজ রিয়েল শিট ইউনিভার্সিটি 
CAE changed the decision pretty fast. Oh. So before the, I mean, their their reaction time was far too smaller compared to the reaction time of the university people. And to be honest, the university people also had their eyes peeled to see how, how does CAE react to this situation. And if CAE decided decided to hold on to this decision, things would have been really really worse. I mean, <clears throat> one kid of my A two who had not super results, but far above average, let's say A, between B and A, that kind of results. APT result hoar aage apply kore, London e, she law school bhootte hoi gese. Result e, tar chemistry te, ar math se aashche B, physics se aashche hoche U, ungraded. So think about the consequences this could have on people's lives. <laughs> it, I'm just act example bollam. The toughest of the examples that I have come across. Baki gula amar experience hoye jayaro ko arok tu kam kharaab, but kono ta essentially bhalo na. এখানে total energy stays constant kotha ra mane tomaderke bujhai as the two helium nucleus are going to get closer they are going to slow down because of repulsion but that slowing down would slowly build up electrostatic potential energy this is something like a spring <coughs> the part as the particles get more closer their repulsive force will become stronger and they will be storing they will be converting that k into electrostatic repulsion energy at one point they are going to get pretty close to each other and and they will uh be stopped simultaneously by their uh by uh, because of their repulsive forces and the they're, gonna, shoot, they're gonna shoot each other in exactly the same pathway and that's when the electrostatic potential energy will once again start converting into kinetic energy so that's that's how it's happening the total amount of energy would remain constant because there is no physical way by which this energy could be radiated or uh, getting out of the system because uh, the question uh, doesn't have anything about to a medium or colliding with other bodies there is no mention of that tarpor page number 3 oh fusion ni to kotha bolte bolte bhule gelam fusion ni kotha bolche there are basically three type of relative decay dui ta hocche breakdown ar eta hocche merging breakdown ekta chilo hocche natural decay ar eta chilo hocche fission ar merging er basic process ta hocche the most commonly occurring radiative process that happens in nature is nuclear fusion which is the basic process by which stars are formed relative decay is very low because the amount of radiative substance that is present in the entire universe compared to the mass of the entire universe is extremely small like like virtually the substances doesn't exist <coughs> uh the percentage of materials which is above carbon and oxygen uh is extremely rare like super rare so most likely these are the elements which were produced in the big bang process at the very initial stage of the universe being created or hypothetically this could be produced out from the collision or merging of two black holes that's also another theory but these are impossible to be produced by any observed physical phenomenon so far so one amazing thing quoting neil degas tyson is that we are all made out of stardust so it is true 
Polawan, this would be a good time for cheering. Yes. I'm on a Polawan tired. Sajan already chole gaise. Say it badnam sune. Ata kam bondo thari na enjoy chilo. Sir. <laughs> sir, sir, sir. These people definitely love CIA a lot. Yes, sir. Bala, bala. Sir, uh, sir, ja aage je sir bita ekam bhi je question da chilo je. Again, electrostatic potential energy. Haan. Uh -huh. Whatever I have both of them. Whenever we work against a system existing force, we store potential energy into it. Jaman art take act object you put a GP store high. At the spring a compress call a elastic potential energy store high. Do the helium nucleus actor take a deeper good as a big due to their charges. So as they will be brought closer, we'll be storing electrostatic potential energy within them. Because in that moving closer, they are going against a repulsive force. That repulsive force is a built in force of the system. System means the scenario made up from two helium nuclei so as they will get closer their k will reduce electricity potential energy will increase and eventually they will stop with closest distance in between that's when the k will become zero their electricity potential energy will be maximum and then they will separate out if they don't have enough speed but if they have enough speed they might actually hit into each other with a really significant amount of speed and then we might have the fusion getting started Coming back to fusion, so how does a star get formed? It uh, is a question. Uh, in the space, there is a hydrogen cloud. Due to gravitational force, the entire hydrogen cloud starts to collapse towards its core. As the hydrogen collapses onto towards its core, the pressure and temperature at the core of the hydrogen cloud uh, increases very rapidly. As the at one point, the pressure and temperature become so high that the protons overcome their repulsions and they collide into each other with such high speed that they start to fuse into each other. And that's when hydrogen starts to convert into helium gas. Sir, oh, if fusion, yeah. sir, at a magnetic field, a deflection to don't worry. So uh, at this point, the protons will overcome the repulsion force and they are going to collide into each other and they are going to start merging into each other. That's when the hydrogen will start to fuse and produce helium. Uh, there are multiple stages of this reaction. You don't have to know all the stages. For your level, it's good enough that 4, 1H1, arrow, helium, 4,2. Fusion reaction, that's good enough. So whenever this fusion process starts to happen, large amount of energy starts to get out from the fusion process. This large amount of energy starts to rapidly heat up the whole hydrogen cloud. And that starts to give out the radiation of light and heat. This rapid release of energy tends to expand out the hydrogen cloud because anything that is hot tries to expand out. At one point, the collapsing pressure due to the gravitational force become perfectly balanced by the expanding tendency due to the pressure and temperature from the fusion process. Whenever this stability is achieved, then the star gets a uniform, stable, round shape, spherical shape, and that's the time when we call, say that a star has been born. A. <coughs> Sir, Bolo. So energy is a part of the engine. Can force us? So, yes, lighter heat emit has just a wee part of Oh, whenever hydrogen start hydrogen atoms or hydrogen nuclear, basically protons, start to fuse into helium, that fusion process gives out a lot of energy. And that energy heats up the core and that energy starts to radiate out and which heats up the entire hydrogen cloud. Now, because it's now being heated up from the fusion reaction happening at the core, it tends to expand out and the gravitation is, start, is trying to collapse it. 
So there are two opposing forces. Gravitation tries to squeeze it down, and the heat generated is trying to expand it out, which is called, uh, uh, which is also called uh, uh, radiation pressure. The outward tendency is called radiation pressure, and gravitational force is called the gravitational collapse. So the gravitational collapse and radiation pressure at one point balance each other out. Yes. Yes. What is easier for you to visualize? Try to think about it. Let's say there is a <coughs> very difficult to see that kind of a, uh, let's say, Duravali Moto Ekta lamp of thing with no very physical shape. Now, now it is starting to become smaller, 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 smaller. And you need to understand as it is becoming smaller at the center, at the core, the pressure and temperature is going very high. At one point, at the core, the fusion gets started. Whenever the fusion gets started, try to visualize that within this uh, faded uh, hydrogen mass, the core suddenly become bright. And slowly that brightness is gonna illuminate the entire shape. <clears throat> now, by the time the entire shape becomes illuminated, the whole thing would have a nearly roughly circular shape, a spherical shape. The gravitational force is trying to make it smaller the heat generated from the core is trying to make it bigger at one point these two tendencies will become balanced to each other Butcho. yes sir hey Twenty-one. Sir, I'm at thirty-four, fifty-five, six, six prime. Twenty-one. Ready? Uh, oh. Again, yeah, both say how much you could So, I'm about I think sixty-six, even thirty-three by color, thirty-three would change again. Thirty-three again, I'm left fifty, fifty seconds. About fifty, about fifty seconds. So, fifty seconds is a casual chilling jack, I guess, ridden. Okay, sir. Would you give a good say? Yes, sir. To which are exactly the eternity of our Terragona, to tell on the Jacob Haludio Kotor, Gona Hoshan. For example, if you want to go for fifty, fifty, fifty as a whole check out of second, fifty as a whole check, eighteen second. Do you say fifty or the Koto? Fifty or thick. Twenty five. 25 as a chicken, 25 border gala, 25 amber cost, but church about AJ. I thought when the on a border across the gym, let's consider the halfway point. Let's say over here, it has a so chair about one a quarter, say 112 seconds. So, a cannabis in a bottle, a cannabis in a much 18, and you give us 112. Suffer cool about her. Sorry, I'm the hundred two of both the second. It's twenty to twenty five to a guy. Sorry, 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 who will see? Who will see? Pardon, who will see? Yes, sir, Bucci. Twenty five will see a guy. Twenty five is a guy who lay in a second. This should be about sixty six sixty eight. So sixty eight dollar. So a canoe should be eighteen and not sixty eight. Sapricula got a high fifty. Man to be Jacob can take a hornagano. The proper conclusion could let tomorrow half life of a lucemi as good. Okay, sir. 34. 34. In the radiative, in the treatment of brain cancer, patient's head is enclosed in a helmet containing a number of radiative sources. The radiation from each source is directed towards, directed towards the same cancer. Which nuclear mass be most suitable for the sources? Well, for any type of medical purpose, we should always use gamma sources. Point one. Point two, if it is inside, if it is kept within a device, not inside inside the patient's body, it should always be expected to have a large half life. So a gamma source with the biggest half life. You can all together gamma source as a actor. So basically, what I answer. Did you do the gamma source? Sakto, tale tadar mudha jeta half life beshi hobe, ota preferable hoyto. Sir, alpha source use kulo amna budha gelo because of its high ionization property. Beta source also bidha ki. 
beta source er beta source it also has enough high energy power and it does not have that much good paint treating capability for example let's see if you want to if you if you both this if you want to treat a person's brain tumor using radiotherapy using gamma radiation you can use let's say uh, 10 or uh, 10 individual gamma sources which has a focus point in a certain part of the brain gamma sources can paint it through the skull and the bone and everything and eventually get reached to that level but you cannot make sure that the beta sources would be able to do that beta sources might as well be good to paint it through certain soft tissues like belly or muscles or something but you cannot essentially go beyond a bone structure yes sir so a main factor is penetrative power Painting power and also because it is used in the device, we appreciate a very large half life as large as possible. Yes, sir, sir, but, our, uh, gamma ray, to, it is not very strong in terms of ionization. But which part of the gamma ray kills the cancer cells? Its energy content or its ionizing property? Well, here's the deal. Gamma ray is not so strong in terms of their comparison. But whenever we concentrate a lot of gamma rays in a single region, then that focus region can be extremely powerful. Let's say you have 10 different gamma sources which are all aiming towards the exact physical location of a tumor. So as the gamma rays will paint it through different pathways, they will not harm so many of the body cells in their path, individual gamma rays, but at the location where they are merging all together, they will produce a huge amount of energy concentration. Butcho. Yes, sir, and the cells will die. Oh, we hope so. Yes. Obik Artakunda also. Which action will most increase a person's exposure to radioactivity? Eating food that has been sterilized by exposure to gamma rays? No. Going for a flight in a high flying aircraft? Most likely. Opening the windows of a house using a gamma motor tube and counter? Yeah. B is the correct response. Sir, aircraft protected from the now. Well, it doesn't say it. Sir, can they expose hote pare to bulben? Cosmic radiation. Cosmic radiation means the basic radiation that the sun is emitting out as part of its radiation. We are basically safe from all the cosmic radiation because of the because of two things. One is the uh, ionosphere and the other one is the magnetic field of the earth. These are the two things which are which basically save us from the problem. If these two things did not exist, then all the cosmic rays would actually directly fall onto Earth's atmosphere and we would have a much higher rate of background radiation. Well, bottom line, the sun is giving us a huge amount of spectrum of light. Santo selectively should do visible light among infrared light produce corona. There is fusion going on. So it is producing all the way range from the gamma photons all the way to radio waves. It has a huge spectrum of radiation. How much power do we receive directly available on, on our surface? We get the visible spectrum. We also have some ultraviolet radiation. We also get some uh, what? Some of the yeah. IR Takana IR. IR is basically heat. Yes, sir. I'm not essentially sure what does cosmic radiation is made up from. Sir. Bala. Sir helium, sir many alpha gamma very beta Egola de Kiyan. Oh. Let's see. 
যেখানে <laughs> A second source of cosmic radiation is the release of charged particles from the sun. But it is, uh, is an ionization radiation produced when primary photons and alpha particles from outside the solar system interact with components of our solar atmosphere. So yes, uh, uh, Sabi, your, the answer to your question is yes. Yes, sir. Operative, question is answered by sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. হাসপাতালে I didn't know. Yes, I asked him. Yeah, see, 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 what's the other problem? Yes, sir. Gagan Mazen performed an experiment in which the alpha particles were, fear, were fired at a, a piece of gold foil. The alpha particles took a variety of paths when approaching the gold nuclei, represented by Dorsen Jaga. Which of the following does not represent a possible path? B does not represent a possible path. Let me tell you why. If these two nuclei are both rippling an alpha particle, if the alpha particle is going straight, it is possible that it can mean it is going through exactly through the middle it is possible that it will be going in a straight path as it will approach them it will slow down slow down slow down slowest speed up speed up speed up speed up speed up but the duration can be positive this one is not possible because what this one showing that this gold nucleus is attracting the alpha particle this one is repelling that's not supposed to happen they're both going to repel so it's, it cannot take a curve in one direction this is okay they're both repelling this is also okay this one is repelling so this pathway is not possible because this is biased okay acha this is 937 so i'm going to come to today's class uh uh chojima so hang on a little bit i'll explain your question the class is officially over kids thank you very much you can leave the channel if you don't have any question